Welcome to the Earl and Lee Museum Hall. My name is Mara and I'm the curator here. Today we are in the carriage house, which is an 1873 barn that the Lee family used to store their carriages, sleighs, and even horses. Today we use the space mostly for exhibits and programming, so you might have come for one of our events. With Halloween right around the corner, we at the Lee thought it might be fun to decorate some pumpkins together. But as we'll find out shortly, it doesn't have to be a pumpkin. You can use a turnip, a potato, a beet. Today, I'm working with my very favorite kind of pumpkin. This is a ghost pumpkin that I got from DeVries Fruit Farm. And I like ghost pumpkins because they're a little easier to carve than regular pumpkins. Um, I've already gone ahead and cut into the top of this guy here. A ghost pumpkin is a little foamier, a little bit spongier inside. It's less slimy and gooey. So the tools I'm using today are a large spoon for scooping out the goop, a marker for drawing on my design, a knife for cutting off the top and carving a face into my spooky jack-o'-lantern, and this nifty little tool here. Remember, if you're doing this at home, to always have a grown-up with you when you are using a knife. Another option is to paint your pumpkin so that you don't have to use any sharp tools. It's a little bit safer, a little bit easier, but it can be pretty messy. So make sure you put down your paper on your table. If you have newspaper, that works really great and it makes cleanup a lot easier. So I'm gonna get started carving out this pumpkin. And while I do that, we're gonna chat a little bit about the history of jack-o'-lanterns and of Halloween. So what is a jack-o'-lantern? Well, a jack-o'-lantern is any kind of fruit or vegetable that can be hollowed out and lit from the inside. And this was a tradition that started with ancient Celtic peoples, mostly in Ireland, but also in Scotland and part of England and Wales as we know it today. And this tradition comes from an old Irish folk tale about Stingy Jack. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about Stingy Jack. Stingy Jack invited the devil to have a drink with him. But true to his name, he didn't want to pay for those drinks. So he said to the devil, why don't you turn yourself into a coin and I'll pay for the drinks with you. The devil said, yep, that sounds like a great idea. I will do that. But Stingy Jack didn't pay for the drinks with the coin. He put the coin in his pocket next to a silver cross. And the devil could not turn back to his regular self. Stingy Jack agreed to let the devil out of his pocket and away from the cross on the condition that he leave Jack alone for one year and not take him to hell. He should die. The devil agreed to these conditions and he left him alone for one year. One year later, Jack and the devil are together again and somehow Jack convinces the devil to climb a tree and pick some fruit. While in the tree, Jack carves a cross in the bark of the tree and the devil cannot climb down. Eventually, Jack agrees to let the devil down from the tree on the condition that he leave him alone for 10 years and not take his soul to hell should he die. The devil agrees and Jack lets him down and they go on their way. But Jack died shortly after. And when Jack got to heaven, God told him he would not have him in heaven because of his behavior. But the devil couldn't take him either because of their deal. So Jack was cast out and sent to wander the world with nothing but a coal to light his way. So Jack went on his way with his coal, which he put in a hollowed out turnip and he wandered the earth with his hollowed out turnip. So you might be wondering, why do we even celebrate Halloween in Canada? How did we get from ancient Irish people to 2020 Canadians? Well, we actually have to go back further and further into the past, before Canada became a country as we know it today. Halloween began 
as an ancient pagan celebration of Samhain. And this was a celebration that marked the end of harvest and the beginning of the dark season. This was a very, very important time of year for ancient Celtic people in what is now Ireland, Scotland, England, and Wales. During this time, villagers would go out into the fields and they would bring in the harvest. Meanwhile, their hearth fires at home would go out. A Druid priest would light a large fire in the middle of the village, a communal fire. And at the end of harvest, the villagers would take a flame from this fire. And they would bring it back to their hearths. And they would have new fire for the dark season ahead. Another important aspect of Samhain was that the barrier between the spiritual world and the physical world of the living was thought to be at its thinnest at this time. So villagers would dress up as animals or as ghosts or as monsters to try and deter the fairies and other monsters from kidnapping them. They would also take their hollowed out turnips and put them out on their windowsills, door sills, and hang them from sticks like jack-o'-lantern did. This was a way to try to ward off evil spirits and protect themselves during this very spiritual time of year. Halloween made its way to North America with the movement of Irish immigrants. When immigrants move, they take their traditions and their stories and their practices with them to their new homes. And that's exactly what Irish people did. They brought the traditions of Samhain to North America, which of course was home of the pumpkin, which was so much easier to carve. Samhain became more of what we would recognize today as Halloween due to the influence of other religions and cultures. For example, in the 5th and 9th century, Catholic popes introduced celebrations called All Saints Day and All Souls Day, which are currently celebrated on November 1st and 2nd each year. These days were days to recognize the saints and the martyrs that had died, as well as to remember and celebrate those loved ones that had passed on. Some scholars believe that All Saints Day and All Souls Day were an attempt by the Catholic Church to depopularize the pagan traditions of Samhain. Now, this didn't really work because these new celebrations didn't replace the pagan celebration of Samhain even though they had similar practices, such as communal bonfires, sweets, and costumes. In fact, people just adopted all of the holidays, and they celebrated Halloween, All Saints Day, and All Souls Day. During the Middle Ages, All Saints Day was celebrated, as it is today, on November 1st. And it was often called All Hallowmas, which comes from a Middle English word. And as we do with Christmas, all Hallow Mass was preceded by All Hallows Eve on October 31st. And over time, that shifted to be Halloween as we know it today. Halloween has changed a lot over the years. And part of that is because as new traditions are introduced and new people move to new places, they bring their beliefs and practices with them and they merge together. This is what happened during the Irish potato famine. Irish settlers were flocking into America and they were bringing their traditions from Ireland with them. But over time, this mixing of cultures resulted in more of a community holiday and less of a religious celebration. So today, many of us look at Halloween as a day to celebrate dressing up and watching scary movies and carving jack-o'-lanterns. So if you're celebrating Halloween this year, like every year, please remember to do so safely, kindly, and respectfully. And this year especially, let's all take care to keep each other safe and healthy and take additional precautions during whatever celebrations we may have. So thank you for joining me here in the carriage house. And until next time, happy Halloween.